Um, so this talk's going to be on uh, Vert.io and Zen. So this is one of those talks where I haven't actually done any work yet. Um, but uh, it's been a while since I've done anything on Zen, so I'm hoping to have a bit of a discussion, get some feedback before I go off and do, do the actual work. Um, I'll start out just with a little bit of background and then talk about the different options that I think we have moving forward and hopefully we can come to a consensus on what the right way of doing it is. Um, also doing this talk is Ian, uh, Ian Campbell, um, so I'll refer to him. Okay, so why Vert.io? First, let's first talk about what Vert.io is for those that don't know it, presumably everybody does. This is the Power Virtual Framework that's used today by KVM and another of other things. Uh, VirtualBox uses it, um, and a few other more esoteric use cases. Um, it was created uh, probably about five years ago, and the intention from the very beginning was to have a hypervisor-neutral Power Virtual I.O. framework. And we very, very, very carefully designed it such that it could support Zen, too. And five years later, it still isn't supported by Zen. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in Vert.io that exists only for Zen, and yet we haven't done it yet. So this is probably a long time coming. Uh, one of the reasons why there had to be specific things to support Zen is that um, there's a sort of a fundamental difference between I.O. and Zen and I.O. and KVM. Uh, the back end of the I.O. drivers in KVM have full access to all of the guest's memory, which means that we can freely copy to and from the guest without any special, um, without any special operations. That's fundamentally different on, on Zen, because on Zen, um, the back end that implements the device drivers um, does not have access to all of the guest memory under normal circumstances. So you need to make sure that you pass references to memory instead of just passing physical addresses. And that's sort of the fundamental difference. So, Anyway, why would we do this? The number one reason is code sharing. Um, today, the Linux kernel has probably six or seven different virtual I.O. frameworks. There is absolutely no architectural difference between any of them. They all are implemented using lockless ring queues. Um, they all make the same mistakes, so indirect references is a good example of that. Um, it's all just a lot of duplication because no, none of us play together very well. The other thing is that today, um, in fact, just a few days ago, I think the initial or the official announcement of the OASIS standardization process for Vert.io was announced. Um, it would be nice if we're claiming this to be a power virtual I.O. Uh, standard if other hypervisors implemented it too. And it would also be a very good validation of the initial standard, the 1.0 of the standard, if we could support uh, other hypervisors like Zen. Yes, yes, so uh, are, there already are folks from Zen on the Vert.io committee. And then, of course, Vert.io is obviously better than everything else out there, so uh, we want to spread the goodness uh, as far as we can. <clears throat> I'll also mention that there has been work, as Ian alluded to, uh, on doing Vert.io and Zen. There was a Google Summer of Code project, I believe, last year. Maybe you want to say a few words about it. Uh, yeah, so I think it was 2011 we had a, a Summer of Code guy, and he implemented up the kind of uh, naive Zen support for an HVM guest. Um, and that, that was all kind of fine. Uh, and he was looking for a PV guest point of view. So in a PV guest, you don't have any the PCI bus or device emulation or any of that sort of thing. And so you can't just use the Vert.io, PCI, MOIO trap stuff. Uh, and so he implemented up a sort of a PV uh, control protocol that, you know, alongside the, the Vert.io IO path. Uh, and he found that was crushingly slow. <laughs> um, but I think that's probably just a case of fixing whatever bug makes it crushingly slow. Right, right. Uh, but that hasn't been touched since the end of Summer of Code 2011, as far as I know. Right. Uh, the wiki page on zenproject.org would maybe make you think otherwise. <laughs> but I think it's just stale. <laughs> so let me ask, how many folks in the room are Zen users or have Zen deployments or are interested in Zen? And of that folks, or of that set of folks, is there an interest in Bird.io? Is this, is this a problem people are interested in? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, I have to listen to it anyway, I guess. I bet a lot of people only care that it works and they don't really care how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
OK, well, let's talk about some of the options to move forward. And I'm really interested in feedback about the different options, too, what the pros and cons are. So please, you know, this is, this is also to, to have a discussion, really. Um, the first option is already works today, and this is just the yeah. This is the just use the existing support for um, device emulation with HVM. So, VertIO um, does look like a PCI device. It's no not all that different from an E1000 or anything else. So there's no reason you can't just treat it like normal device emulation. So how does the VertIO MMIO stuff that's used on the ARM Foundation model, for example, fit into that? Because that's not, is that, is that a separate abstraction thing? So yeah, the VertIO MMIO is just another transport for VertIO. Yeah. And instead of being PCI, it's a platform device. But the same principle yeah. applies here, too, that it looks no different than another platform device. OK. There's no so special. So once upon a time, I remember hearing that people weren't that keen on having another transport platform thing, but I guess that's not true or misunderstood. Yeah, that's a changed. whole different discussion. So yeah. having to do with PCI not working well on ARM, but right. yeah. So anyway, this already works today, but as far as I know, it's incredibly slow because device emulation is not terribly fast. Uh, it's not optimized in Zen. So I, you're dealing with the fact that the back end would be in a stub domain, which adds another layer of indirection. Uh, um, I think it probably precludes a stub domain. I think this would only work if your QMU was in DOM0. Why? So the stub domain can have a block back driver or block front driver in it. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is what I mean about the layer of indirection, right? So yeah. this is not optimal, clearly. Um, I believe that there's no MSI support in HPM guests today. That was true during Summer of Code 2011. Oh, but that is no but longer I true. Uh, I don't know. I had a feeling that something had moved on that, but I, yeah. OK. So then that's not correct anymore. Um, but more importantly, if you were to move this out of the stub domain um, and try to put it in DOM0, it would break the Zen security model, because then the, the backend domain would have to be able to access all the guest memory. And I think that's probably the biggest deal breaker in all of it. Yeah. And from a code sharing, point of view, if you've still got to have a Zen PV route out of the subdomain, then that doesn't really you help. haven't really bought yourself anything. Yeah. So this has the benefit, though, of it works today. So that, that's here for a complete list. <laughs> but it's obviously not ideal. Option two, this is basically what the Google Summer of Code project was. And that's write a PV transport using grant tables and Zen store. So the advantage is it works with PV guests. Um, and it fits the security model. But on the other hand, uh, it means introducing another VertIO transport. And um, a lot of the difficult code in VertIO is the transport. Um, so having another transport does eliminate a lot of the code sharing benefits that you would get. So which, so I'm, not, I'm not terribly familiar with VertIO. The transport is the, um, uh, the sort of the setup, the, the control path, or the data plane? It's, it's, it's the, so technically, it's both. Right. So with VertIO, we have the concept of the transport, and then most transports use the same ring implementation. Mm -hmm. um, although, in this case, yeah, you could use this. Well, one of the issues is that our ring implementation uses physical addresses, yep. which you wouldn't want to use here. You'd want to use grant table references. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's potentially a small change to the ring implementation, but nonetheless, it's a change. It's kind of like a feature. And, and yeah, 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 right. yeah. Um, but the numeration's different, hot plug's different. You know, yeah. There's a lot of things that would need to be taken into account. So I think the account. Summer of Code guy didn't use ZenStore for this bit. I think he plumbed what would be the PCI CFG space writes, reads, and writes over a control ring, I think. Well, you still need some mechanism to do setup in the guest. So you still need a mechanism to enumerate. I I'm pretty sure I looked at it yeah. and that there was some Zen store tie-in. OK, um, that might just be sort of, sort of for the root of the vertio. So, so was, uh, the, the sum of computation was using Zen store for the kick. So they were, if I remember correctly, they were basically using the, um, 
the what you on on, on um, PCI we just have like this config space register for the cake, and they're doing that over Zen Store to make sure that you process your rings. Well, oh yeah. yeah. In Zen Store was the node that set up the Vodio bus, and then the individual devices were done by right. using that bus to do the control plane stuff. Right, right. Yeah. Well, there is no, anyway. that's the thing, there is no Vertio bus. So this is one of the differences with the Zen model is that we piggyback off of other buses. So right. in the case of PCI, obviously, we're piggybacking off the PCI bus. In the case of MMIO, we just sort of rely on device tree to do the discovery of the device. So we really don't have a bus emulation mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, yeah. I, and I mean, Zen bus, I, I sort of use Zen bus interchangeably with Zen store because, you know, that's how the enumeration works. Right. Um, and then obviously, you know, as a QMU person, uh, the other trouble with this is that um, I think the natural implementation would be to have uh, backend drivers in DOM0 kernel. Um, I'd like everything to be in QMU. Uh. <laughs> So I guess that's not really a hard requirement, but... No, I mean, we, we have user space drivers as well. Yeah. It's, it's not... Right. Yeah. Right. I don't think that And, and we do have PV blocker. drivers for Zen in, in QMU, although I don't think anybody actually uses them. QDisk is fairly widely used. Sorry? QDisk is fairly widely used, which is the Zen PV disk backend in QMU. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. Well, so at any rate, I also don't know that... I think this is the best approach. Um, so this is the approach that I, I'm a big fan of. And so this is to take Vertio PCI and keep it almost completely unmodified, except instead of storing physical addresses in the ring queue, store grant table references. Um, there are already hooks in the Linux kernel to essentially support mapping and unmapping of any DMA that's passed via Vertio. In fact, that's exactly why that interface is there, is to enable uh, the use of grant tables. And that's a Vert.io feature. That's not the generic DMA ops. This is a Vert.io feature. This is okay. not the generic DMA ops. In fact, for better or worse, we don't use the DMA API for Vert.io drivers. I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, because maybe the guy that wrote the initial ones didn't realize that he should use the DMA API. Yeah, so uh, that broke Vert.io <laughs> on foundation model for me on Zen. I see. In DOM0 for, for DOM0's own disks. I, sorry anyway. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we could do this in a backward compatible fashion. Yeah, please, can someone fix that? That would be really good if someone would fix that, by the way. But. Yes. Um, so does Zen tie into the DMA API to do grant table? No. OK. So you would also need to have an IOMMU driver yeah. that so did the grant. So Zen would you, uses the DMA API on PV to tie into the P2M, the, 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 the right, page right, translation right, stuff, right, but right. not yes. an IOMMU as such. Right. But can you swipe your TLB, I guess? Right. But. At any yes. The, fir the first option you mentioned uh, an issue with performance, uh, and uh, in this case, is uh, you didn't. Uh, so uh, I'm wondering if uh, getting a grant, releasing a grant, uh, is uh, time consuming at very high packet rates. Um, I might have some follow up. Uh, we did uh, some para virtualized version of E1000. Uh, which might have similar issues, but would be another option in the list. Right, right. So uh, to paraphrase the question, it's does the act of acquiring a grant table reference and doing the page flipping between uh, one domain to another, is, that, is there a performance overhead to that? This is sort of a fundamental question about uh, memory copy based uh, hypervisors versus hypervisors like KVM, where you have full access to the guests. Um, yes, there is a performance downside. Um, the counter argument would be that um, you get better isolation by having the memory separation and having the hypervisor do a DMA API. This is sort of a fundamental design difference across hypervisors. So, 
implementations because they're designed for Zen. They, they kind of try to mitigate as much as they can some of that overhead. Whereas Vodeo being more generic, maybe won't be, either won't be or won't be even willing to right. you know, add well, complexity there to, right, to, right, to, to right. offset. Yeah, I, I think the, that's not a huge concern because um, you know exits are always expensive. So even in Vert.io, we go to tremendous lengths to do batching. Right. So I think by the same token, you guys go to tremendous lengths to batch grant table yeah. you know, operations. So all of the interfaces are there. Like Vert.io actually has a transactional interface in the guest where you start adding a bunch of buffers and then finish. So it gives you the ability to do batching. Right. So I actually think. That's already there okay. uh, for Vert.io. Anyway, though, um, this can be done in a way that it is fully backwards compatible with uh, the current Vert.io implementation by using a transport feature bit. One of the nice things is that um, it can also be made compatible on Zen because you can always fall back to the slower um, kind of bounce through the stub domain model. So not just in terms of compatible forward not just in terms of uh, making sure that, uh, yeah. So this is fully backwards and forwards compatible, this, this approach. And because we're using grant table, we're going through grant tables, it also fits the security model fairly well. Uh, we get all the same code sharing. And the only downside, because I was wrong about MSI, apparently, is it'll be a fair amount of work to get a, a kernel backend working correctly. So for instance, if you wanted to do vhost and DOM0, um, we would have to teach vhost about going through grant tables. Um, vhost is not as well abstracted as the, the, the guest Vert.io layer. Right, that to get the really good Vert.io performance, you need vhost. No, that's not true. So um, today, we get tremendously good block performance just with QMU. Um, the network driver in QMU is, has been less optimized, so we're still bypassing for vhost net. My, my hope is that in the not too distant future, that'll change, where we can drive uh, you know, high performance networking from QMU too. You mentioned MSI, but does that mean that the plan here is to use sort of emulated APIC style you know, proper interrupt things and not event channels? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So would event channels be hard to bake into the Vert.io model? Or? Well, the question would be why. So the advantage of using uh, like the APIC is that uh, hardware virtualization is more moving towards accelerating APIC operations, right? Right. So even though today you might get some benefit from um, using event channels in the not too distant future with posted interrupts, and then eventually when those become uh, workable for virtual devices, it'll actually be much faster to do uh, interrupts through the virtual APIC. Okay. So, um, and by the same token, on KVM, we have power virtual EOI. Uh, we have X2 APIC emulation. So I think a lot of the benefits you get from event channels, you also can get through other mechanisms. So. Right, but this can't work for a PV guest, though. Just can't work for a PV guest. That's the only downside. So. So of these options, you know, any questions, comments, uh, suggestions? I mean, this is obviously the one that I think is the most promising. Uh, this is where you get the best code sharing. I think you'll get good performance. Um, the only real downside is no PV guests. But I think PV guests can't last forever anyway. Uh, so maybe not so much PV guests, but the new PVH guests, which are PV guests that use some of the hardware features, but in particular, they don't use APICs. About that. Which I would say is a, a negative thing. Right. I think that's a misdesign. Maybe that's something to think about as an yeah. additional feature. Yeah, because the hardware is definitely moving towards accelerating. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of code sharing, I mean, unless it is going to completely supplant the Zen PV stuff in, I mean, N years, where N might be a fairly large number, then. I mean, from the Zen point of view, there's no real benefit to us because we've right. got to maintain both. Actually, uh, and that's something I neglected to mention, but um, you can actually look at this and ignore um, just block and networking and look at other drivers that are implemented on top of Vert.io. For instance, the Vert.io RNG driver. Yeah, I don't think that there's an RNG driver today. For Zen, that would be a nice thing to have. And then there's a greater question of down the road, 
um, as more power virtual I.O. drivers are added, wouldn't it be nice if we could add it to one mechanism and not have to have duplicate drivers for Zen and KVM? So even if you don't buy the networking and the block argument for this, there is an argument for converging on other types of drivers beyond network and block. Maybe performance isn't quite so critical or... Right, where, you know, but still security matters, right? You don't, you don't want to yeah. bypass that. And by the same token, the stub domain approach won't work um, for, say, a power virtual uh, RNG because you would still need a Zen RNG to get back to the host. Uh, yeah, or well, you might pass through a real hardware RNG to a stub domain that services. Sure, sure, So sure. would this work for multiple stub domains if you had a vert IO going to one stub domain doing disk and one vert doing network? Or is there... <laughs> I mean, because I when you do uh, subdomains, that's kind of what you end up doing. I, I, yeah, I think that's a little crazy. Yeah, there's, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, right? Okay. Um, yeah. I don't really know uh, the thinking in terms of split. You're talking about splitting up QMU and having different subdomains for uh, different devices? So it would be driver domains, really, which are kind of like subdomains. That oh, oh, driver yeah. domains. So Yeah, so you would have yes. a disk driver domain and a network yes. driver domain. Yes, yes, yes. This is where the back end's in a separate domain, right? Yes, 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 yes. But then you would need to be able to route the PCI stuff to a different domain based on where, and yeah, yes. and you kind of need to then disaggregate QMU into multiple instances of QMU, <laughs> which I know people are interested in doing for other reasons as well, right. at least in the Zen world. Right. Um, yeah, just one more thing to do here to make yeah. this. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thanks, everybody.